podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Several North Carolina counties are participating in what is being called the largest long-term study on children's health in the country. I recently spoke to two of the project leaders in our state to learn more about the National Children's Study. Dr. Chip Walter, Dr. Anna Maria C.A. Garis, welcome to North Carolina Now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us here. You are both working on a really interesting study. It's called the National Children's Study. Dr. Walter, let's start with you. Why don't you share a little bit of the background behind this, this particular study? Uh, well, this study was initially conceived in the late 19, or around 1999 uh, with a presidential commission on studying really the effects of the, or looking at the effects of the environment on children's health. And then in 2000, Congress actually authorized a study to be done, uh, which would look at the effects of the environment on children's health. Dr. Siega Reese, where are things now, and what are the overall goals of this study? Well, right now, as you can imagine, to um, conduct and carry out a study that's going to recruit 100,000 children across the United States, we're in the process of testing our um, recruitment procedure. So we're in a pilot phase, and this pilot phase we hope will end um, sometime in the fall and for the main study to begin in about 2012. Um, the main goals of the study, and as you can imagine, um, with the hugeness and the size of it, um, and also the environment issues, it's very broadly defined. And so we're very interested in understanding many aspects of what influences children's health, from the preconceptional phase, from before women become pregnant, during pregnancy, all the way throughout children's lives up to the age of 21. Dr. Walter, this is being billed as the largest study of its kind ever done. Why is it important to have so many children involved and then to follow them from birth up through age 21? Well, it's really important uh, when you're looking at exposures in the environment. And as Anna Maria said, we're defining exposures very broadly here. So it may be you know, the air that children breathe, the water they drink, the neighborhoods they live in. If you're really looking at how they affect children's health, in order to be able to tell differences, you need to recruit and study a large number of children. So the number of 100,000 was actually arrived at uh, to, to determine those factors, whether there was actually a, a difference in looking at exposures on out health outcomes in children. Dr. C.A. Garis, you are in recruitment now. So who are you looking for? Who should be interested in participating in this study? Well, in North Carolina right now, we have recruitment um, and women enrolled in the study and children from two counties. It's Duplin County and Durham County, which is right next door to where we are, UNC and Duke. Um, and in Durham, which is where um, Chip and I are actually the co um, principal investigators for the Durham site. We're recruiting pregnant women um, um, from ages 18 up to um, 40. Um, and any time um, in their pregnancy um, is when we're actually asking them. We're recruiting through our um, prenatal providers. And we're also in recruiting women who are at a high likelihood of becoming pregnant because we want to actually capture that preconceptual phase of a woman's life that actually tells us so much more about how pregnancy will actually be initiated as opposed to just the process of pregnancy in and of itself. So, Dr. Walter, if, if someone is interested in this study, what can they expect? How, how can they get involved, and then what can they expect if they become part of the study? Well, I think there are multiple ways that, that women can become involved. First, uh, in, for example, in Durham County, uh, we're working with prenatal care providers in their offices, actually, to uh, recruit uh, women into the study. Um, and it's not only women. We're actually recruiting uh, fathers or will be recruiting fathers as well so we're really recruiting and looking at the whole the whole family uh, and for women to become involved uh, really they can either call and, and join the study uh, if uh, if they're interested uh, to learn more about it uh, they can look it up on the website or we may be contacting them and finding them in the prenatal care providers office. Dr. Siega Reese once someone gets into the study what's involved at that point? 
Well, what we do is we try to collect some information via questionnaires about their um, different life experiences, both medical history, family history, but also health and behaviors during the pregnancy period. Um, and that's also true for the child. So we're very interested, um, for instance, on if the child was breastfed, formula fed, what the child um, actually consumed during that first year of life, vaccination um, visits, what kinds of vaccinations a child actually has received, as well as looking at some of these um, developmental milestones that we're very interested in children. And we'll be doing that. As you can imagine, there are certain things that we're very interested early on in children's life, and there will be different types of things that we're wanting to measure later on um, as the child grows older. But we're also collecting information, um, for instance, some biological specimens, so some blood and urine. We're collecting dust samples in the home, as well as water samples and air samples. So, as I said, we're trying to collect both um, information from questionnaires, but also some specimens that actually reflect the environment. Now, you two come from different disciplines. What excites you most about the study and your work with the study? Um, well, I'll go first. I'll let Chip since he started on the other ones. So um, by training, I'm a nutritional epidemiologist, and I have worked with several cohorts on pregnant women and have studied how the nutritional status of pregnant women, how it affects both the course of pregnancy as well as the birth outcomes. And I've also done um, some studies looking at the same sort of um, exposures during pregnancy, but then how it affects the lives of the children. So one of the things we're very interested in that's very um, pertinent for where we are in America today is early determinants of childhood obesity and how that could potentially um, exist with some events that might occur um, intrauterine environment kinds of exposures. Well, by training, I'm a pediatrician, and so uh, I'm in the office seeing children for well visits and also for sick visits, uh, you know, in my everyday life. Uh, so I see a lot of the problems that children encounter. So some of the problems being asthma, uh, being overweight or obese, as, as Anna Marie mentioned, uh, uh, being born pre prematurely or preterm or being born low birth weight, or having developmental problems uh, which can affect them throughout the course of their you know, childhood and, and uh, through their lifetime. So. And a lot of times I don't have answers as to why. You know, why does my child have asthma? And I may not have an answer. And I think this study uh, will really start to give us more information so we can answer some of these important questions regarding child health and development. And Dr. Walter, you have some phone numbers and a website if people want to learn more about the study. I do. Uh, if you live in Durham County, the phone number is 919-544-3222. And if you happen to live in Duplin County, uh, the phone number there is 910-296-0103. And there's also a national website, which is www.nationalchildrenstudy.org, or .gov, sorry. <laughs> well, it is a fascinating study. Thank you both for coming and sharing information about it. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.